Welcome to a championship edition of Highly Questionable. What do you like today, Bo? Come on, man. Nick Saban lost. You know what you're coming here to see. <laughs> Dale, papi. <laughs> Did we overrate Alabama's defense going into last night's game? We can't start that way after that game. The championship decided in the final second. Alabama's got a lot of pros on their defense, and Clemson has some pros on their offense. Their quarterback's a top 10 pick, and Mike Williams, their receiver, is a top 10 pick. And when he was out of the game in the first half, you saw Clemson labor a little bit. When he was in the game the second half, you saw that the first-round picks that Alabama has are not at defensive back. He would have done that to anybody. That combination was brutal last night. They didn't expose Alabama. They were just one second better. Yeah, well, let's be clear about this. A significant part of the intrigue of this game was the indomitability of the Alabama defense. Now, I don't think we overrated them. I just think a lot of people ignored what the weakness was, is that if you could get time, you could throw on them. The problem was time is hard to come by. Time is hard to come by in this game. They got four sacks. It just so happens that Clemson has a quarterback that can move, and that's the kind of guy that gives Nick Saban trouble. I will say this on behalf half of Nick Saban. I know we don't credit the losers very much, but keep in mind, he came within one second of winning the championship in a championship game where he was trying to hide his quarterback all game long. That's a pretty impressive coaching job, even in a loss. Well, he had plenty of time to win that game. Yes. He's a super coach. I mean, he got plenty of time left. That's right, buddy. That's what super coaches, they do. He was so shocked on this island that he couldn't even recover the onside kick. That was it. That was, that's it. That was the city. They left you a second, Saban. What you got? They left you one second. Why didn't you do anything with it? By the way, if somehow Alabama would have gotten the ball and scored after that onside kick, our question number one, should Dabo be fired or stoned? Did last night convince you that Deshaun Watson should be the number one overall pick? Man, we just can't let the man be in college for one more day, can we? Deshaun Watson put on an incredible performance. Back-to-back great performances in the championship game. And on this one, he led his team to a victory over Alabama. I said to myself coming into this, if he had a Vince Young game, he might turn himself into the number one overall pick. He was really good in this game, but it wasn't enough to make me look at him and say, that guy's absolutely going to be an NFL star. He does look, though, like an NFL player player, which is not an insult. I just don't take him all the way up to number one. I just haven't seen many quarterbacks better than him. You've got an Ohio native and Mitch Trubisky who played at North Carolina and maybe the Browns want to go with yet another quarterback. I haven't seen a better quarterback than the one we were watching last night. My guess is that you haven't either. Here's the thing though. We're just not yet at that part where we talk ourselves into making these quarterbacks better than they actually are. As you recall from last year when we did that, we get a little bit toward late February, early March. Then we start lying about the quarterbacks. I did find out something, though, as soon as that game was over last night. Guess where this Heisman vote went? It wasn't announced in my family until last night, until the victory was done. The Heisman vote of his, confidential until now, surprisingly revealed at the very end. That was my man. Everybody blew it. Dashaun, Dashaun Watson. He's the one who got my number one Heisman vote, buddy. On national TV, you heard it first no, here on the ESPN. Late, highly questionable. Late. You heard it late as well. <laughs> well, money. Who do you vote for? That's not right, Poppy. <laughs> that's, not, that's not nice, no. Poppy. That's not nice. That's not nice. <laughs> How troubling is Derrick Rose's disappearance last night? The Knicks have fined him. They did not suspend him. He says that he went to go see his mother in Chicago. He didn't tell anybody that he was going, though. And a phone call buys you a lot in this situation. It becomes something unprofessional without the phone call to tell people where it is you're going. It looks especially bad, though, when you have been sort of bickering with management, according to Adrian Wojnarowski, because your playing time has been reduced. I mean, how often do you see a no-call, no-show in the NBA, right? Like, you have guys who don't go to games for whatever reasons. They put out bogus excuses or whatever it is. But you rarely hear about a guy that's like, yo, he simply did not show up to the arena. Like, when people don't show up to work, that's when they call the authorities to see if it's okay with you. So, yeah, it's troubling that he did not do this. The question is, where exactly does this end? Because it's hard to disconnect what we know is happening with him and with the team and whatever he says he had to do with his mother. Well, you can penalize Derrick Rose because he didn't show for a game. Phil Jackson made uh, $12 million a year. He very seldom shows up for a game. You know, I mean, if he can do it, why shouldn't Derrick Rose do it, you know? I think Phil probably calls in and says, hey, I'm not coming today. I'm on an island. Somewhere. I don't know why you think he calls. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. 
Future Jets fan to have confidence that Tom Coughlin and Doug Maroney will turn the team around. He keeps making him a Rudy. His name is Doug Maroney. He used to coach the Buffalo Bills, and now he is the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tom Coughlin got some big, lofty title executive price vice president or something like that, but he's really to be like, hey, remember when we were good? This guy was around here. Should you have confidence they can turn it around? Do those two guys think there's a quarterback on the roster? Because if they think there's a quarterback on the roster, you're doomed. If they don't think there's one, what makes you think they'll figure out who the next one is? That's part of the problem, and it's the biggest part of the problem. Blake Bortles can't play that position. They've got some good professionals on that team. One of them's not playing quarterback for him. Last time I checked, he had more career pick sixes than victories, and here you're entrusting him to Duck Marone, Doug Marooney, whatever you want to call him, a guy who was so delusional that he said to himself, I don't need this Bills job. I'm going to put myself on the free agent market because I'll get something better. And he's been sitting as an assistant and waiting until right now when this is the job that becomes available to him, the one without a quarterback. I want to congratulate both in their new jobs, and I want to wish them good luck when they start looking for another job in two years. See, a lot of people are going to be saying that, but Gus Bradley lasted an awful long time there doing nothing but losing. They might have three years on that job before they're looking for another one. Is Tom Coughlin going to work next? The door at Walmart. <laughs> Does Jordy Nelson's injury change things for the Packers? If he can practice Saturday, Mike McCarthy has said he will play on Sunday. That's all he needs, but we've already seen Jordy Nelson not totally healthy. Ceases to be the Jordy Nelson that you remember from two or three years ago. This comes down to Aaron Rodgers. His receivers are not very good. The skill guys have betrayed him much of the year, and over the last seven games, he's been great anyway. I don't think it much matters who's playing wide receiver if that guy is quarterbacking the best way he knows how, and he's going to be doing it in the antiseptic conditions of Dallas against a defense that doesn't turn the ball over on the opposing quarterback. Yeah, but Jordy Nelson is a deep receiver who had over 90 catches this year. Like, not having him is going to matter because they struggle to run the ball as is. But can we stop and take a moment to appreciate this? Saying that he will play on Sunday if he can practice on Saturday with that pesky issue of a collapsed lung. A collapsed <laughs> lung. Right. How long is it before you go back to your desk job with a collapsed <laughs> lung? Yeah, this is going to matter. You know why? Because anytime he catches the ball, if he is out there, guess yeah. what somebody's going to try to do? Yeah. Collapse the other lung. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now you got the perfect excuse for your little uh, precious yes. Aaron Rodgers. You yes. know, well, he doesn't have any receivers. Yes. You know, Jordy's out of circulation. Yes. You know, I mean, he cannot go deep. He yes. cannot go underneath. You know, what do yes. you expect him to do? Perfect. Perfect. My father's got the excuses built in for me. Coming up next on my son's TV show, we talk to Dabo Sweeney. Hi, Dabo. How are you? Nice, hey, nice talking to you again. Nice talking to you. I'm putting all my morning cleanse on this year, buddy, so you better come through for me. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. I like him already. Joining us at the beach today is Dabo Sweeney. You know, we talked to him in August, and this man said he had all his money on Clemson. Hi, Dabo. How are you? Nice, hey, nice talking to you again. Nice talking to you. I'm putting all my morning cleanse on this year, buddy, so you better come through for me. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. I like him already. Well, now Dabo's a NASA champion, so let's run that again. Or were you always as relentlessly positive as you are now? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I think that I've been, uh, I've always tried to live my life uh, with a with a the glass is half full you know I, I thought i had everything i needed you know i didn't really realize that uh my life wasn't the norm until i you know got it up in middle school uh, and kind of realized that that uh you know it wasn't that way at everyone's home and things like that but uh you know i remember a lot of people helping along the way i remember uh the sacrifice and struggle uh, of my mom uh, i remember some tough times with my dad and uh, watching him uh, struggle, you know, with life. For people who don't know about your hardships, Davo, like how often were you sleeping in your car, for example, before uh, you, know, you got not, to college? Not, yeah, not not often. On occasion, you know, we we when I was a kid, you know, we just kind of, uh, you know, just middle class. My dad was a hardworking man, sold washers and dryers, fixed. He was a washer and dryer repairman, sold washers and dryers. Uh, my mom cut hair. She worked at the mall, um, and you know, again, I thought that we had everything, and uh, we had a nice little home. 
Uh, but then we lost our home. I didn't really understand why until later. Uh, but my father uh, was an alcoholic and he dealt with the struggles of life, you know, with alcohol. And he was a great man. Uh, I lost my father uh, a year ago, August 8th. Uh, he was a great man who loved his family. He was one of the most giving people that, that you could ever meet in the world. But he, he just, when he would drink, he, was, he became mean. And so there were, there were times when we had to run out of the house. And sometimes we'd stay in the car, sometimes we'd go stay with a friend or whatever. And that, was, that be kind of became the norm through middle school for me and into high school. And it got worse and worse and worse. And, you know, we lost our one home. We moved into another home. We rented it. Then we moved to another place. Uh, then that kind of came to a head. And then my mom and I, my parents finally divorced uh, my junior year high school. And we moved into a little town home, lived there for three months, got evicted. So then we moved in with a friend uh, and I slept on the floor. She slept with, with my friend's sister. Um, and then I ended up leaving my mom and moving in with my, my grandmother, my dad's mom. And she kind of had a little government sub subsidized housing apartment that I, that I lived in with her. So it was a trying time for me. Uh, and there were a lot of questions as a young person of why me? And you know, what I tell people all the time is, you know, you have to be able to dream and think and believe beyond your circumstances. Dabble, you reconciled with your father later in life. Can you tell us uh, the most scared you were, the situation you found yourself in when you were most scared as a youngster? Oh, just times the police came to my house uh, as a kid. And, uh, or, you know, my dad might have come home and, and, and he wasn't himself. And, and uh, you know, it was violent times. And I'm, I'm hiding and hoping that, you know, uh, it'll go away. Uh, those were some scary times for me as a kid, you know, because you, you, you don't really understand all that's going on. Um, and, um, you know, and then, and then scary times for me when, uh, you know, I, I, we all separated as a family. You know, I never wanted that to happen. I wanted us, no matter what, to stay together, but it just got to a point where things had to change. And uh, that was a very difficult thing. And I was very scared for my mom and uh, you know what was going to happen with her and, and you know there was a lot of struggles along the way you know and a lot of people know my mom ended up moving in with me at college uh, and was my roommate for three years shared the same bed you know my sophomore junior senior year of college so you do what you got uh, to do to make ends meet and to be to, to chase your dreams uh, and for me that was the sacrifice that we had to make didn't you get to college and the registration fee was like $550 and you didn't have it, right? You, like, how yeah, did well, you get it? What did you do? Yeah, well, what, I, I had been at Alabama for a year and then going into my second year, my redshirt freshman year, and I would go, I went to get my schedule. And so I go over to get my Pell Grant because uh, I got to pay for it. And I had gotten my dad's, we'd gotten the tax returns in late. And so the paperwork hadn't processed. and. And basically I had to pay half my tuition that day or my schedule was gonna be canceled. And uh, the, my money wasn't gonna come because it was gonna be another month or so before I got my money. And then, uh, so I was counting on that money that day. Um, but uh, it was crazy, it's crazy how things work because I go home that day and, and uh, I had a, a Discover card uh, envelope. It's got a letter and it says, you know, uh, Congratulations, you know, you qualify for, you know, our new Discover Check program. Uh, and they had two checks attached to this letter. And I thought it was a hoax. I called 1-800-DISCOVER and talked to the lady. And I'm like, all right, there's one. And she's telling me all about, oh, you just write it like it's a check for whatever you want. And I'm like, well, there's one problem. I don't have a Discover card. And she <laughs> looks, or puts money. in my, you don't have any she puts in any my money. information and, and she comes back. She goes, oh, no, you do have a card. And they had mailed it. She goes, oh, I see it was returned to, it was a bad address. And I'm like, what? I got a Discover card? And she goes, yes. And she goes, you just write it for whatever you need. And I said, well, what's my, what's my credit line? And she said, $1,000. She might as well told me $100,000. And uh, so I went and paid Mr. Cotton, my landlord. I owed him about 400 something dollars in rent. I went and paid my $550 to the University of Alabama that I had to pay. 
I was instantly $1,000 more in debt, uh, but I was still in school and still had a fighting chance. So uh, that was a great, great moment. And I, I always talk about that when I, when I give my testimony because uh, only God can do something like that. Oh, that's nice, very nice. Dabo, thank you for being on with us. We appreciate it, sir. Yeah, guys. I appreciate nice, the nice constant love to too. You. Okay. Nice talking, nice talking to you. <laughs> go Tigers, yes, go sir. Tigers. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> My name is Papi, but you know that already. I don't want the what, baby. I just want the Fetty. Polo to the socks, homie. This ain't Perialis. Let me get the rock. I'm the ball like a spaghetti. It is getting hot in here. The block be hot. No, not Nelly. You can keep the ratty. I'd rather have a Chevy. I don't want no <coughs> lately. I have been getting. <coughs> I just want the bread. Keep the peanut butter jelly. Broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that needs to urgently call a medical professional for a problem that has been lasting way longer than four hours. Do you question? You give us topics and events, and that's gross. Do you question if this guy's a strong? Strong. We like to question strength around here. What do we got? Oh, boy. He's that guy. Hello, you know, that guy. <laughs> what was that? Is it bounced up like he did something? <laughs> What's that? What I want to know, though, what was he doing before that that made the other person be like, I got to stop my workout and I got to get this on my camera right now? Because something had to happen before that. Was that like set five? He's almost as jack as this guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something, buddy. Videos like these, that's why they make you sign a waiver before you go work out in the gym. <laughs> this guy, no, this guy's actually graceful. Yeah, I can't believe there's no one who works at the gym to come in there and be like, bro, you're going to get us all fired. The whole place is going to get shut down when he waits hits you in the head. If you're going to work out at the gym, you need the partner. Oh, oh, yes, you do. Yes, here we go. Here yeah, come on, we come go. on. Why y'all yeah. making me wait, Why yeah, making me wait so long? There it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there's the video my father wanted. Yeah, buddy. This is the greatest video we've ever shown on this show. Time to play the game that is still recovering from an unfortunate waxing incident. See? Oh, no. That's gross. That's also gross. Tell us what's on television tonight. We'll tell you if we're intrigued or not. On ESPN3, UNLV, and New Mexico. Where's ESPN3? Internet. Oh, the internet. Okay, on the internet. Let's check out a game recently between Nevada and New Mexico. Check out the clock here. Last minute of the game or so. Look at this. The presence of mind by the point guard here is the fresh. Not there, though. New Mexico's up 14. Who was behind him? He steals it, gives to... Here's the handoff I was talking oh. about. Boom. Up Marshall. 11. Wow. Wait, are they going to come back? Wait, wait, wait. How are they getting the ball back so fast? <laughs> How are they getting the ball back so fast? <laughs> Look at Nevada coming back, throwing up just wow. bombs. They're not coming all the way back, are they? I missed this game. They do wow. come back, right? Wow. Oh, come on, man. man come on. Game cheating. Wait, the again? game. This is overtime. The game is cheap. Oh, man. I would have slammed that PlayStation down on the ground so hard. Oh, man, it would have been really demoralizing if he made that. <laughs> yeah, I was rooting for that to go in for some reason, and I shouldn't have been. But, Monty, are you intrigued? I do feel like if we got any mention of UNLV, however, you got to show, you know, from the weekend, old girl on one leg trying to find the action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. There you go. All right, there you go. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Listen, the University of New Mexico took a big shellac last time, but tonight they are going to come through, buddy. They got a bunch of Latino players there that can happen. Tonight, the University of Mexico is going to no. pull all these stops. <laughs> no, okay. I understand why you would think That's they would right. have a lot of Latino New Mexico. players. Right, right. No, no, no. Those are two different things. On Fox Sports Southwest, Bucks and Spurs. 
sure, I will partake in a little bit of this. But before partaking in this, let's partake in a dance-off at a recent, what, Spurs game, Bucks game? Let's find out together. In Milwaukee, you guys are going to get to determine who the winner is. Whoever you're allowed us for afterwards is going to receive a $100 gift card courtesy of Surge Restaurant Group. All right, Sam, you're up first. Hit it, little dude. Oh, what's happening here? Barely doesn't want to do this. Wow, we're really unenthusiastic dabbing. I, I mean, I feel like we just shamed a poor kid who didn't want to dance. Bomani, are you intrigued? You should have shown a little man after him, who's seen very much so up to the task. He wants that free dinner really bad, even though that restaurant did not appear to have a kid's menu. <laughs> Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. You know, that kid had a rough night. He had a rough night. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for the action. But tonight, he's going to be ready, boy. He's going to make a strong comeback. He's going to show the entire, the entire fan base there that he, he got what it takes to make it through. Games in San Antonio. The kids in Milwaukee. If he didn't want to dance in Milwaukee, he probably doesn't want to dance in San Antonio. He went to his room and never came out. He's going to dance like this kid. Oh. Oh, look at that. Give him some of that shake. Confident shakery. Exclusive video of me as a child. Oh, that shaking I felt under the table was <laughs> yeah. him doing the same dance. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, please stop that. Please. Oy.